during this stretch. If there's another camera you'd like to see, don't forget, goodfutile.com slash traffic has all your cameras right there. Emily? Ebola has already killed nearly 900 people in three African countries. Now we're learning more about an experimental drug being used to treat both infected Americans. Dr. Kent Brantley is taking the drug. He's back in the U.S. and showing signs of improvement. American Nancy Reipel is also sick. She was helping decontaminate doctors in Africa. She's on her way to an Atlanta hospital. Her condition is also improving after getting the experimental drug. Now we want to talk more about Ebola and see exactly what it is and if there's any concerns for us here in Utah. We got Dr. Brandon Webb. He's an infectious disease physician with Intermountain Medical Center. So doctor, first off, this might seem like a weird question, but for a lot of us, Ebola just sounds like this crazy thing in Africa. What is it exactly? So Ebola is a viral infection and it's part of a family of viruses called hemorrhagic fever viruses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they come sporadically. So that's why we talk about outbreaks. They're not present in the population uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and when they infect humans, it's because they've emerged from the, the uh, animal population okay. and caused an outbreak in a population that they shouldn't be in. Oh, weird. Uh, and, how, and how do people get it? How is it spread through, through the person to person? So I think that's the most important thing to understand. Um, Ebola virus is spread through direct contact with infected body fluids. Okay. So it's not pleasant, okay. um, but body fluids like blood, waste fluids, vomit, are all full of infectious virus particles. Um, and so direct contact with those virus particles transmits the infection. So it means it's kind of hard, harder to transmit. It's not just coughing like you would the cold or whatever. You have to have direct contact. Right, so the important thing to remember with Ebola is that outside of maybe a three foot danger zone, the droplets that have those infectious particles don't travel in the air. And that's in contrast to, say, the chickenpox virus mm -hmm. that can float on the air for meters and meters. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, a, a interesting point with Ebola, and it's helpful for the control of, of the spread. Now, you know, when you walked into the studio, I asked you, are we going to get Ebola here in Utah? And you were very quick to tell me, no, that's not something we need to be worried about. Yeah, so I was just in West Africa in October, mm -hmm. and uh, in the United States, we follow what we call universal precautions. Okay. Um, latex gloves, gowns, special isolation procedures for patients with special infections. Mm -hmm. um, those are universal. They're standard. They don't have resources to implement those kinds of precautions in West Africa, and thus outbreaks tend to persist. We're well equipped in the United States to deal with all kinds of infectious problems, and we do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Certainly with something like Ebola, we'd be a lot more intensive in our precautions. Well, we can even see as, as these two Americans are coming back, they've been such scrutiny and such care is taken to make sure that nothing is spread and that they are treated. Well, doctor, we sure appreciate all of your answers here. And again, no major concerns here in Utah. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Glenn, back over to you. All right. It is